Hey, it's Devin Sheets with Alpha Sound. So today I thought we could compare these three microphones gain before feedback responses. They're all super cardioid, so it's a nice comparison. We have the DPA 4098, which is about a $800 microphone. We've got the DPA 4018, which is like around $2,000. And then we have the Shure Beta 58, which is like 150 bucks. So just a note about what you're hearing on the video. Right now you're listening to my face microphone, and when I turn on any one of these three microphones, it overrides my face mic in the mix. So I suppose the first thing that we should do is just listen to each of these microphones individually. So here's the DPA 4098. Check, 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 one, two. Hey, hey. DPA 4018. Check, 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 one, two. Hey, hey, hey. Sure, beta 58. Check, 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 one, two. Hey, hey, hey. So the next thing I want to do is compensate for any frequency response changes by the fact that they're sandwiched kind of close to each other. And so I'll do them individually. I'm going to move this one out of the way, hold this one down in a way, and I'll play noise through the speaker, and I'll take a reading of the current frequency response of the 4018. We'll start with that one. So now I'll put this microphone back into place, and also this microphone back into place. So now we'll play the noise again and see what change. Okay, so that is the frequency response difference by having the mic sandwiched. So this is applying an inverse curve to try to get back to the way it sounds without the other microphones around it, for what it's worth. It seems to be very minimal. Also, because I have a high-pass filter on this whole system, what's going on down here doesn't really matter. So now I'll do the same thing for the beta 58. And lastly, we'll do all of this for the 4098. While I have the speaker right here, I want to take a second and calibrate these microphones using corrective EQs so that they can all sound like each other. Now, it doesn't really matter which one I use as the reference. I'm just going to pick the 4018 as the reference. So the first thing that we should do is take a quick listen again without the corrective EQs. Hey, one, two, one, two. Hey, one, two, one, two. Hey, one, two, one, two. All right, we'll add the corrective EQs. Hey, one, two, one, two. Hey, one, two, one, two. Hey, one, two, one, two. Now the next thing I'm gonna do is take this speaker and I'm gonna put it on the ground like a, uh, a monitor speaker. Now, one thing I wanna do here is flatten out the frequency response of the speaker as heard by these microphones because I don't want there to be a bias uh, for certain frequencies to feed back over others just because you know the speaker's outputting different relative SPL levels at these frequencies. So the way I'm gonna do that is take a test microphone, I'm gonna hold it, in the area of these microphones and apply a corrective EQ to the output of the speaker to flatten its frequency response. So if I hold this microphone up here and we turn on the speaker without the EQ and I take a measurement here of the test microphone's input uh, and we can see a before and after with the EQ applied. So the next thing to do, obviously, is listen to these microphones through the speaker. I'm going to begin with the corrective EQs off, except for the little ones we put on at the beginning to account for the fact that they're physically close to each other. So let's begin with the 4098. 
Gonna turn it up in the speaker. Check, 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 one, two, check, check. Okay, right, maybe right about there is a good volume. Check, check, one, two, hey, hey. All right, let's go to the 4018. Check, check, one, two, hey, hey, check, one, two, two. And the beta 58. Check, 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 one, two, hey, hey, check, check, one, two. Okay, now let's turn on our corrective EQs. And I'm gonna bump the level up a little bit here. Let's start with the 4098. Check, check, one, two, hey, hey, check, check, one, two. Check, check, one, two, hey, hey, check, check, one, two. Check, check, one, two, hey, hey, check, check, one, two. So what I find interesting about this test already is just that we've neutralized the differences in the frequency responses be between these mics. So that's normally what I think people would assume makes the difference between mics in terms of their gain before feedback performance, right? The differences in the peaks and the valleys of the, of the frequency contour. But with that sort of out of the equation, as best we can do, like what else is left? They still have different uh, gain before feedback responses. Now, I would expect the 4018 to have a better gain before feedback response than the 4098 because it's like a much more expensive microphone. But amazingly, the uh, Beta 58 has about as good or even better gain before feedback uh, than even the 4018. So that's very interesting. I think we should take this one step further though and add another corrective EQ to flatten out the frequency response of the microphones in relation to the speaker so that every frequency is being emitted and then picked up by the microphone at the same relative SPL so we can even eliminate the general microphone contour that we have applied to all three microphones, which in this case happens to be that of the 4018. Let's just flatten it out and see what happens. All right, so let's listen to the 4098 first. Check, 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 one, two. Check, 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 one, two. Check, check. 4018, check, 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 one, two. Check, check, check. Beta 58, check, 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 one, two, check, check, check. So what I would say about these three products is that the 4098 is something we've had a lot of experience with. We put it into situations as like a podium microphone where gain before feedback is just not the critical concern. Um, it sounds great, it's DPA. Um, it's very small, so that's really cool. And it's also like not nearly as expensive as like a 4018. Where budgets allow for this, we will put in a 4018 because that is like the highest quality, great gain before feedback. It's just like a rock star microphone for us. Um, the SM58 or a Beta 58 is something we use in situations where we need something more rugged, maybe. So it's going to get dropped on the ground or it's going to be out in the elements. And it's also something where, yeah, it doesn't like sound super amazing. It's a $150 microphone, but with enough EQ, uh, you can actually get it to sound pretty good. And it also just has good gain before feedback as well. So like, that's great.